the world and to all my friends and subscribers out there. So today I'm going to be doing um, a request from a friend, a mini scratcher, um, for a sculpts of a, some crows and vultures in 1 to 24 scale. So um, the first thing that I did was I found out the sizes of the birds. So I hope you can see my paper here. It looks kind of light on my monitor. But I, I wrote everything down of how long they were in their wingspan so that I can have a good idea of what size they translated into. So uh, the crow, I kind of worked out that he was going to be 20 millimeters in length. So um, when you're looking up animal lengths or bird lengths in particular online, the length is actually the length measured when the bird is usually dead um, and it's like a specimen that they measure at museums and things like that. So to measure the length of a bird you kind of go along the backbone and you you would use a measurement as if it was lying straight on its back with its beak on the ground straight behind it and its backbone was a straight line from there. So that's what I've done with the crow here and you can see that's why he doesn't quite make it up to the very top of the 20 millimeters because his beak's down. If his head was facing up that's when he would reach the 20 millimeters. So I did the same thing with the vulture here. I can't remember what kind of vulture this is, sorry. I, it really does depend on what you want. I just had a look at some pictures of vultures. I actually drew a few kinds of vultures just to get a feel of what they look like and how they looked and moved and what colors they were and things like that. So um, definitely if you're going to be making a model of an animal, birds, that you should really look up a decent amount of reference material. Really look at the pictures and see how the, the animals are shaped because that's going to be very important when you're sculpting them because you, you're actually just you're not trying to sculpt the, the animal from your mind because you'll never get it right that way unless you really know an animal very well. Uh, you really need to look at a, a reference photo and get the shapes right because you're going to be sculpting the shapes rather than the animal, if that makes sense. So I've got all my details down here and my little pictures to work off and, and I've drawn them in just so that I can keep to scale when I'm sculpting. So you'll see how I do that in a moment. So the Things that you're going to need, I have just have a piece of glass to sculpt on because it stops um, my Sculpey um, sticking. So you, you can use Sculpey or you could probably use green stuff. I'm going to be using some really thin wire, gauge unknown. It's just extremely thin wire. You can see how thin it is there. And uh, a little bit of a bigger gauge. This could be closer to 20, I'm not entirely sure, but it's quite a bendable wire, the same wire I use in my other sculpting videos. I'm going to be using um, an X-Acto knife, some sculpting tools, a blade, and some wire cutters to cut the wire or whatever you have lying around will be fine if you don't mind damaging your scissors or something. So if you don't have sculpting tools, um, I'm just using needles here that I've made into my own sculpting tools. You can see that's very well. One's a hook, one's just a sharp point. And then I've got a bigger blunt needle and another pointed needle. And they're just at the end of some old pencils that I stuck them on the end with some clay. Okay. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, so the next, the first step, you are going to need a base to put the bird on because you are going to want to hold it by something, and you are going to want to have something that you can either stick in the ground for the bird to be placed, or put it around a small twig or something to make it look like it's in a tree. You're going to need something. So I've got a piece of wire here that I've bent in half and I'm going to make kind of um, a twist at the top 
where the loop is. So the clay will have something to grab onto because most of this is going to be outside the bird. So it kind of looks like a top of a T, I guess. One side is bigger, and I'm going to keep holding it up against my bird. And the 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 two bits of wire are going to come out where the legs kind of are, because then you can disguise them, or you can use them as legs if you want to, because the scale's so small that you're never going to be able to make legs in polymer clay, and for them to to work or look realistic. In any case, so. Next is the clay. So I'm going to break off an amount and I'm going to measure it against my burr just to make sure that I've got about the right amount. And then Okay, so I'm not going to put the head on yet because the chances of me squishing it are quite high. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is get the wings, shape of the wings. So I've got my picture of my bird here, which is a great um, guide. And I'm going to use that to kind of get my wing shape. And I'm going to flatten a piece of clay. I'm actually going to cut the wing shape out because it's going to be the easiest way for me to make the shape of the wings. But first I'm going to flatten it out rather than rolling it on the glass because it will be a little bit difficult to remove. And I'm going to use my exacto knife to measure against the picture and cut it. Next I'm just going to flatten out another piece and this one's pretty thin as you can if you can see how thin that is and what I'm going to do is cut it to the shape of the tail when it is flared out let me just get everything back to where it was when it's flared out when the bird is flying so if you can see down here I've drawn a little picture of a bird kind of flying, looking down at it, just so that I could see what kind of shape the tail would be. And it's kind of like a fan, so.
the same thing again and just make a really thin oops, make a really thin piece one end's kind of thick er so I'm gonna do make two little triangles So same thing with the second one, we're just going to smooth it in. Okay, now it's starting to look a little bit more like a real bird. Okay, so next is the head of this little guy. And his head is super tiny and his beak is super huge. So I'm going to do the head and beak in one. Let's see if we can get the right amount here. Okay. I think I have the right. I'm going to take my smallest pointy needle. This is just a sewing needle, like I said before, that is just in the end of a pencil. And I'm going to put some texture on this guy. So I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see this part. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some long feathers on his wings. So all I'm going to do is do lines down here. To indicate long feathers. I mean, you could even go so far as to um, put real feathers on this bird or flocking to make it look like it has feathers. But in my opinion, I couldn't get that to work, so it looks too fuzzy, so I didn't do that. And then um, I'm going to try, see if I can get it to, I might use, see what happens if I use this. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just pressing it in, just to, looks like little dots actually. I don't like that now. I've got a little tool that's got like a little um, sharp point. Oh, that might look a little bit better.
So I'm really happy with how he's come out so far. So I'm going to go ahead and bake him. And I'll see you after that. So here is the finished product, a close-up picture of my crow. And of course, like all miniatures, uh, when you look up close, the details look quite crude. But then as you move away from that really close-up view, then you get the kind of general shape. And I think it is a good an example of a miniature crow. So all I did was I painted uh, this crow in a grey colour to symbolise the lighter feathers and then I just painted the dark um, marks and darker patches of feathers over the top and then I gave him a couple of highlights. I didn't do anything special to his eyes which are the, just the two little holes uh, but as you can see it doesn't really, really make too much difference. So uh, stay tuned, um, there's going to be part two where I cover uh, the vulture and how I sculpted that and that should be um, probably posted in within a week I'd say within a week I'm, I'm aiming to have videos up every Friday and hopefully I can do that as, long, as soon as I get my schedule organized so keep an eye out for that part two and there may be a part three if people are interested in and seeing how to pose uh, wings on birds that are in movement and uh, if people want that then I will definitely do a part three where I will show how to uh, position sculpted wings. Okay thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in my next one. Okay thanks, bye! And corn flour so that it's not going to stick and the more you mix it the stickier it'll get so basically how this why i'm adding the corn flour is that silicone um, actually cures through moisture in the air